We're going to jump on in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the prophetic word. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace, for your mercy, oh God, for your patience. Just praise you, oh God. Just praise you. Just please receive the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your blessed, holy, and high name, for you are worthy to be praised. And I magnify you and I glorify you. And you are God by yourself. You have no peer. You are beyond imagining. You are beyond visualization. You are beyond everything that we are. So we just thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your program. So please forgive me for any sin. Wash me clean. Fill me now with the Holy Spirit. I must decrease, decrease so you must increase. So I move myself out of the way. And so God, speak through me, breathe through me. Let what is said be what you want said, that you might be glorified in all things, that the saints might be edified, that the demons might be terrified, because we don't know who's watching. We don't know who needs this prophetic word, but the Holy Ghost knows. So I thank you for just letting me be a part of your great and wonderful program. And signs and wonders and miracles shall follow all that believe and receive and obey this word. Thank you for it. I believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. My sister's here. Lisa's here. Amen. So glad to see everybody here. All right. Today's live prophetic word is lip service. Put that on screen. Today's live prophetic word is lip service. So let's jump right on in. <clears throat> we need to read some scriptures. And I'll, we'll break down what the Holy Ghost is trying to say. Okay. Joel 2.13. Joel is a prophet in the Old Testament. Joel 2.13 says this. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. That's the NIV version. Here's New Living Translation. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfeeling love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Berean Study Bible. So rend your hearts and not your garments and return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving devotion, and he relents from sending disaster. Now, what did the Bible just tell you? The Bible just told you that God does not want to send disaster or calamity on people. So why does it come? It comes when we won't repent. It comes when all we're giving God is lip service. You just running your mouth about how much you love the Lord. Oh, Jesus, haba, or whatever. But you're living any kind of way you want to live. Now, when the scripture says, wring your heart and not your garments, what that's referring to is there was a custom that Jewish people had that when they were trying to repent before the Lord or when they had done something wrong, when they were trying to make an outward show of, of their remorse over something, they would, tailor, they would tear their clothes, okay? They would, they would tear their clothes. And it was an outward show of remorse that I'm sorry, I'm repentful, I'm not. You know, I don't want to, you know, I'm sorry. I know that what I did was wrong or maybe I'm sorry I got caught because sometimes we do that too. Maybe sometimes you just sorry you got caught, but it was an outward showing supposedly of an inner condition. But the Bible says that what the Lord wants is not for you to make an outward show. Talking about how sorry you are, not to tear your clothes in a ceremonial gesture of repentance but to tear your heart, rend your heart and not your garments. What does that mean? And then we're gonna talk about return to the Lord. Don't you know that you can get to the point where with God and life, you become hard hearted? Do you know what it means to be hard hearted? It means you don't have any hope left. It means you don't have any faith. It means you're no longer optimistic. You're now pessimistic, you're negative. You expect bad things to happen. You expect negative things to happen. And you embrace wickedness. You embrace things that are not from God because you would rather deal with that than serve God. And when your heart gets hard, it just closes up to any love, any faith, anything like that. A lot of people have that same problem in their intimate relationships, in their marriages. You can get to a point where your heart is hard towards your spouse. What that means is you don't want to hear anything they have to say. 
You don't care what they say. You don't care because your heart is hard and your mind is closed. You can get that way with your child. You can have uh, such a relationship with your child until where it doesn't matter how they act, it doesn't matter what they say, you don't want to hear it. That means your heart is hard. It's no longer tender, it's no longer soft, it's no longer open to possibilities. So God says, instead of making this outward show of, of or whatever you claim to be uh, sorry about, he said he wants you to tear your heart. He wants you to be torn up in here. He wants you to tear away that hard heart, tear away that attitude that caused you to leave away from God. And then it says, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate. Look at that. After all that God has to deal with all the time, he is still gracious and compassionate. He will open his hand and give you grace, and he will open his heart and give you compassion. Slow to anger. In other words, God is not quick-tempered. Now we quick-tempered, but God is not quick-tempered and abounding in love. Another translation, translation says abounding in loving devotion. So in other words, God doesn't just love you. He loves you in a devoted kind of way. He's committed to you. He shows up every day to fellowship with you. He watches over you. He listens to everything you say. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. He's devoted to you. So in other words, the scripture is saying, why are you turning your back on that kind of love? Why are you just making your heart hard? Why are you making your head hard? Why are you closing yourself off to that? Because you can get to that point. And the Lord said, he wants you to tear your heart. And then it says, the last part of Joel 2.13 says, and he relents from sending calamity. New Living Translation, he's eager to relent and not punish. Berean Study Bible, and he relents from sending disaster. That means that when disaster comes, that means you have been ignoring the Lord for so long He's going to let trouble come upon you to get your attention, to teach you the error of your ways, to show you that you're walking in the wrong direction. That's what that means. And a whole lot of Christians, if they told the truth, they didn't get right with God until something happened. Life just smacked you upside the head. That was God sending trouble and calamity because you weren't listening. You weren't listening. Your heart wasn't tender towards the Lord. You didn't want to hear what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you. You were just, blah, 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 I don't hear you. Just going on about your business. So when you get like that, you can expect trouble to come. And I've discovered some people still don't get it. Some people go through calamity after calamity after calamity and don't learn nothing. Because they don't get that those things are coming upon you because the Lord your God that loves you and loves your soul is trying to get your attention and tell you that you're going the wrong way, that you're building your life in the wrong direction, that you're making unwise choices that are going to result in death. So even when the Lord sends calamity and disaster, why do you think all this stuff is coming upon America? People hate when prophets say that, and I don't care. I don't care how mad you get at me. I do not care. People hate when prophets say that. Why do you think all this stuff is coming after uh, America? Natural disasters and, and all this bloodshed and all this gun violence and just calamity after calamity is because America has turned her back on God and we've gone our own way and we've called right wrong and wrong right and we began to set up our own system as opposed to what thus saith the Lord and when you get like that God is going to let some trouble come upon you to get your attention don't ever 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 think that you can just Walk away from God or ignore God or act like there is no God and God is not going to answer you from heaven. Don't ever think that you can know the Lord at one point and then walk away and the Lord is not going to see you about that issue, about how you just abandon your relationship with him. Why? Because the Lord has the ultimate skin in the game. He got the nail prints in his hand to prove that he loved you enough to die. Okay? That's the kind of love he's offering you. Why would you turn your back on that? But if you do and your heart gets hard, Nothing can harden your heart faster than getting caught up in some sin. Whatever it is that your flesh wants, whatever it is, it's the easiest thing in the world to get caught up in something. The next thing you know, let me tell you something about sin. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you want to pay. Okay, let me say that one more time. Sin will take you 
further than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you want to pay. Don't you know that some people make decisions as teenagers and they never recover from them? Did you know that? Did you know that you can get a lifetime bill for a few minutes of thrill because you wouldn't listen to the Lord? Did you know that? Did you know that in those formative years when the foundation of your life is being set and you don't listen to God and you go off on another direction, don't you know that some people never recover? Some people never come back from that, okay? I've seen people make a conscious decision to turn away from Christ and less than six months later, they die because their heart had grown hard, had grown hard to the Lord. One of the things that the devil loves to do is hit you harder than you thought and then try and make you angry at God, try and make you say that some calamity that the devil brought is, is, is uh, from the Lord or that's what God wanted. When we just read the scripture, but God said he doesn't want to allow that to happen, but he will step back and allow stuff like that to happen to you if you are not listening. But the devil also likes to bring stuff in your life and then make you blame God instead of taking stock of your own self and your own sin. Did you do anything to get yourself there? Do you have uh, relationships on the side? You know, are you married? You got you took vows with a spouse, but you hooking up with other people. Are you paying your tithes? Are you giving God ten percent out, out of your dollar? Are you bearing false witness? Are you the kind of person whose mouth is always full of gossip, always spreading the worst about other people? Uh, are you covetous? Are you the kind of person that is always complaining because you're always comparing what you have to somebody else and telling God that what he gave you is not enough? If you're living like that, if you're doing stuff like that, stuff like that will make your heart hard because stuff like that blocks you from seeing how much God loves you. Don't you know that's what envy does? Why do you think envy and jealousy is so bad? It's because that's acting like God don't love you. If God did it for one, he'll do it for two. If God did it for them, he'll do it for you. You don't have to be envy, envious or jealous of another person, especially another believer, because God is no respect of person. But if you let the devil get that in your head, then your heart might get hard and then you just stop listening because you're so mad. And when you get to that point, at some point, the Lord is going to step back and let calamity come up, come upon you to get your attention. That's not the same thing as an attack from the devil. You have to be able to zone the difference between the two, because sometimes the enemy just come in to steal, kill and destroy. That's what he does. But if your heart is hard and you haven't been listening to God, then sometimes calamity comes to get your attention to let you see what you're doing. OK, uh, let's move on to some other verses we need to read. We're going to go to Isaiah 29 and 13. Isaiah was one of the major prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, we call him a major prophet because he had a lot to say. His book was very long, over 60 chapters. Okay. The minor prophets just had smaller books, not their message was less important. I say that almost every week now. So Isaiah was prophesying against a wayward Israel. He was prophesying against a nation that had left God and had gotten caught up in idol worship. Isaiah says, Isaiah 29, 13, New International Version. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules. They have been taught. Whew. New Living Translation. And so the Lord says, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And the worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Uh, uh, Berean Study Bible. Therefore, the Lord said, these people draw near to me. Excuse me, something's itching my nose. Therefore, the Lord said, these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is but rules taught by men. Lord, have mercy. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. That means exactly what it says. <clears throat> Why do you think that all the religious stuff we were doing in America every Sunday got torn down? Why do you think all the religious 
and denominational stuff we did, we can't do it anymore like we used to. Because we got caught up in a bunch of stuff that don't mean nothing about nothing. We got caught up in the celebrity preacher. We got caught up in the mega church. We got caught up in how big is your con congregation? We got caught up in, you know, are you on TV? We got caught up in who's a worship leader? Don't none of that have to do with seeking and serving God. So God took his mighty hand and tore it all down. <clears throat> I said it before and I'll say it again. Some people don't recognize that you are never gonna shake your pastor's hand again in this life. Did you know that? Some people don't understand that you are never in this life gonna shake your pastor's hand again. Some people, that congregational worship that we used to have, it ain't gonna never come back like that, like it was, because God tore it down. And I see some people steady trying to build what God has already torn down. But God is saying here that he doesn't want lip service. These people come near to me with their mouth. You just run in your mouth about how much you love the Lord and you honor him with your lips. You just saying a bunch of Christian y things. You just saying, okay, a bunch of religious things, but you don't mean none of that in here. It says, but the hearts are far from me. Don't you know? that God can see in here. Don't you know that God can see every level of you, spirit, soul, and body? Don't you know God can see every part of you? And God knows when this is all you're doing. I call that jaw jacking. You just jaw jacking, you just running your mouth. And God knows when you mean what you say, but when your heart's not in it, and God is not interested in you serving him, and your heart ain't in it. God is not interested in you going through the motions, just giving him lip service. Okay, aren't we always talking about God bless America and all the different kinds of things we say and how we're such a Christian nation? Do we act like a Christian nation? Do we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength? Do we love our neighbors as ourselves or do we love our neighbors as long as they're the same color? Do we love our neighbors as long as they're the same political affiliation? Do we love our neighbors as long as whatever kind of conditions you have? Is that what the Bible says? The Lord said to love your neighbor as yourself, but that's not what we do. There's some people we won't even worship with. Some people that you don't even wanna be in the house of God with because you don't think that those people belong around you. You think you're some type of isolated elite Christian, you know, e e elite uh, elevated group and don't nobody know the Lord but you. And can't nobody worship God right but you. No, the Lord says that the worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Another translation says human rules they have been taught. Another translation says nothing, the worship of me is but rules taught by men. Do you understand what the Lord is saying there? The Lord is saying that, that all that churchy stuff that we have learned how to do, because some people have learned how to church, doesn't mean anything to the Lord if you do not actually love him, and if you are not actually living for him, how are you gonna come? <laughs> how are you gonna come up in the house of God with your wife and your side chick? Talking about, oh, I, Jesus, I love you. Oh, I love the Lord. How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna come up in the house of God talking about how much you love the Lord, and you don't never pay no tithes and no offerings? You don't never put any money towards the house of God. How you going to walk up in the house of God and talk about how much you love the Lord when the Bible says, how can you love God whom you have not seen, but, but hate your brother whom you have seen? That person standing right next to you while you're worshiping and you can't stand them. Your heart is not in it. You just doing that. You just going through the motions. The Lord said he's tired of that. Okay, wait, I got a prophetic word coming. For behold, my people, I just say to you now, I am looking for those that worship me in spirit and in truth. I look for those whose heart is sincere towards me, whose heart is open towards me like as a little child. And behold, I have my reward with me. For those that will serve me sincerely from the hearts as little children, I will bless you, surround you, encompass you. I will come in and have dinner with you and you'll have dinner with me. I will dwell in your abode and we will fellowship. And for those of you that have hardened your hearts, 
And for those of you that do not care to serve me, as I say in the scripture, I will spew you out of my mouth. Those of you that are lukewarm, lukewarm and your hearts are far from me. Mm. And it will be, it will be unpleasant and it will be unexpected and it shall come upon you suddenly, says the spirit of the living God. Whew. That's a rough word. So what the Lord is telling us there is that you got to get your heart right with God right now. You cannot afford to go one more day and not be right with the Lord. Now, why is this so important? Why is the Holy Ghost hitting this so hard? I'll tell you why. There's two reasons and here they come. The first reason is because there are opportunities coming in the future that, that, that God is going to give those that love him, but you have to be genuine. You cannot be faking it. You cannot be going through the motions. You have to actually love the Lord. You have to actually be serving the Lord and you got to mean it from your heart. Some of you looking at me, you're going to be in situations where your people are going to be watching you and you're not going to know that they're watching you. But if you love the Lord for real, you know that the Lord is always watching. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to use profanity. I'm not going to lose my temper. I'm not going to steal a stapler from the office. If you still go to the office, I'm not going to talk about my boss behind their back. I'm not going to act unchristian when nobody's watching because we're going to be in situations in the future where somebody is watching and we don't know. It has to be genuine from your heart. You have to serve the Lord when nobody's looking. That's the test. Anybody can talk about how much they love the Lord when you got a crowd of people around you. Everybody want to be saved then. What about when nobody else can see what's going on? And here's another one. What about with your spouse? Don't you know that sometimes taking up your cross and letting your light shine in front of your family is one of the hardest things you have to do every day? But you have to be genuine because the opportunities that the Lord are going to give you, people are going to be watching and you might not know that they watch it. It can't, your Christianity can't be lip service. It's got to be real. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to totally blow that opportunity. I saw Paula White talk about this, but uh, this was a long time ago. I mean, a long, long time ago. And Paula White still had her today. Can't wait. That theme song, that was such a cool theme song. That's how long ago this was. I heard Paula White get on TV and say she was looking to hire someone to get on her staff. And she had three or four candidates and she had narrowed it down to this one person. And she was on her way over because they were working somewhere in the church and they spilled like a bucket of paint or they fell off a ladder. Something happened and they started cussing and bleeping, bleeping, bleeping. And they just went off and all this profanity came out their mouth. And Sister Paula White saw that and she was like, oh. And then she ended up not hiring that person because she was on her way to give them a job. And then she heard all that profanity come out their mouth and she's like, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe maybe they weren't real. Maybe they as real as it seemed. See, that's what I'm saying. Stuff like that. You're going to end up messing up the whole opportunity if you don't really love it. If you're not dedicating your service to the Lord when nobody's watching you. Do you understand that? If you're a janitor uh, and whether or not they uh, deemed your job essential or not, then you need to clean that place with excellence. You need to, my father always taught me to do more than what you paid for. Because my father always came early and stayed late. So I watched him when I was a boy. I'm not making that up. I watched him. And so if you've got to clean that facility, don't do some type of half to bake job. Don't just do enough to get by. Do more than what you pay for. Give them people their full service. Give them more. And when you when you do that dedicated unto the Lord, dedicate that excellence of service to Christ, and the Lord will lift you up and bless you every time. But you got to be real. You got to serve God when nobody's watching. Because sometimes people are going to be watching and you're not going to know they're watching. That's coming up in the future. That's why the Holy Ghost is hitting this point so hard. OK, you might be thinking you sit in your office by yourself and you don't know that someone is right across the way. Or you might be thinking how many times are people being caught with a hot mic on? And you might think nobody's listening and here you come with all this stuff. 
And now all of a sudden you've messed up an opportunity because, because we have to serve the Lord from our hearts. I can't stress that enough because the Holy Ghost is putting emphasis on it. We have to really love Jesus and we have to really serve him for real. It can't just be this, okay? That's number one. But here come number two. Number two is there's some devastation coming. I know you, you think 2020, but 2020 was just the beginning of sorrows for a lot of things. I wish I didn't have to say that, but it's true. There's some more devastation coming in the future and you know who's gonna get caught by it? People that are not really serving God for real. This is what I mean, I have to give you a visual. Let's say the Lord is here and here's the perfect will of God and you find yourself out here. What you don't understand is that death is out here now. It's not like it was before. The Lord called you to be close to him and to stay in step with Jesus. So wherever Jesus moves, you're moving with him. Wherever the Holy Ghost tells you to go, you're following the spirit of God. You're learning how to be one with the Christ. But if you do this, and now all of a sudden the Lord's here, and now you're out here doing just whatever you want to do, a whole lot of people are going to get caught out there by death and it's going to take them out because that's the kind of time we're living in. It's not, a, it's not like it used to be. It's a time of obedience. It's a time where you've got to get under the blood and stay under the blood. It's a time where you've got to get into obedience and you've got to stay in obedience. It's a time where you have to hearken diligently into the voice of the Lord your God and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in detail. What do I mean by that? I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. You have to, if your prayer life is not already here, you gotta get your prayer life to the point where you're asking the Lord, should I go out today? Should I go out the house today? If my job requires me to go to my office, then I'm gonna put my mask on, ask the Lord, what route should I take to work? Should I take my regular route or should I change my route? Should I go to the grocery store today? What grocery store? Where are the best deals? What time should I go to the grocery store? Unless you think I'm not practicing what I preach, ask the Lord that every day in my morning time with him. I surrender my whole day to him. And there's been so many times where God has led me to deals because I went to the store at the time he told me to go. There's been so many times where God has led me to find some things that were hidden that other people didn't know where they were, but he let me see them. He showed me some secrets. And I got some good prices over and over and over again because I'm listening to what the Holy Ghost is saying. And if the Holy Ghost is saying, don't go to that store, or the Holy Ghost is saying, don't go today. That's what it means that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's what that means in a very practical application, that you've got to get your prayer life, your surrender to Christ to the point where you are no longer just making a schedule and going for it, where whatever schedule you make, you lift it up to the Lord and say, here's my calendar. Here's what I would like to do, but not my will, but thine be done. You show me. For example, if you got a project you're working on, Lord, what day should I work on this project? Okay, that's a Monday project. Okay, so every Monday I'm gonna do this. Lord, what day should I work on this project? Okay, that's a Thursday project. So I'm gonna dedicate my Thursday to that project. Like that. You gotta get your walk with Christ to that level. And the reason you have to do that is because Death is in the streets. Do you understand that death is in people's mouths now? Do you understand that people are literally breathing death on each other now? Do you understand that? Do you understand this is not a joke? This is not a game. That's the kind of time we live in and you can't afford. If your prayer life is not like I just described, then you need to get it there today. Not tomorrow, right now today while you're listening to me. Because we can no longer afford to be out of the will of God because that is why some people have died. So reason number one is that there are opportunities and blessings coming our way, but it's only for people that are sincerely serving the Lord. You have to mean it from your heart, not people that just lip servicing. You just want people to think you say, you just want people to think you're Christian. You just want to look like a Christian, but you have like this whole other life on the side or on the sly or like, you know, that's not, it's not coming from your heart. That's why you can't let people make fun of you if you have a sincere or a childlike heart. You're not supposed to be childish. You're not supposed to be immature, but we're supposed to be childlike in our hearts, meaning, yes, daddy, whatever you say, daddy, what well, the Lord says, well, I need you to do this. Okay, daddy. 
Just as simple as that. Okay. But if you're not like that and you just, you know, you just run a game, you're going to end up missing opportunities that God wanted to give you. One, but number two, you fool around and get off the path that Christ has ordained for you to be on. And here you are, and you don't even know you're out from underneath the blood and the covenant and all that. And then here come the enemy. That's right. That's very, very real. So that's why God is saying right now, today, you got to get it right in your heart. And you know why that's personally so important to me? Because I don't want to lose anyone that I love and I don't want to lose me and I don't want anyone that loves me to lose me because I have a whole lot more work to do. I have a whole, whole lot more things I need to pour into the world and I want to be around to pour into it. So that means I got to stay close to the Lord so that whenever the devil is coming, whenever, whenever death is coming, Jesus is a good ch shepherd. So he just pulls me out the path. He saw death coming this way. So he says, well, just do this. Now, another thing I have to give you, another specific detail I have to give you about following Christ is that the Lord does not always give you all the details. You can't make God be who you want him to be. You have to learn how to accept who the Lord is. The Lord might give you details. He might not. He might just give you a commandment. The Lord does not deal with everybody the same way. So stop. When, you, when, when I give my testimony, what you're supposed to get from my testimony is the encouragement to increase your faith, not thinking God's going to do it for you the same way he did it for me, okay? Because God's plan for us is always individual. God does not deal with everybody the same way. That's in the scripture. He deals with some people face to face like he did with Moses, okay? He deals with some people in a dream. He'll give you a dream. He deals with some people in open visions, meaning you're awake, you're not asleep. And you see something in the spirit and it's very clear and it's unmistakable. He deals with some people by a burden in your heart, meaning he lays something in your heart and you can't get rid of it. No matter what you do, you, it, it, just, it just won't leave you. Some people he deals with by a burning heart. First one was a burdened heart. Some people he deals with a burning heart. And what that means is that you're just passionate about something and you just can't let it go. And other people keep telling you, why don't you, why are you always fooling with that? Because you've got such a, pa such a passion for it. You cannot let it go. See that? So however it is that God deals with you, sometimes you can be reading the Bible and the scripture just jumps out at you. Sometimes you can be listening to music and a song, the words begin to speak to you in a way that you know this is the spirit of God calling your attention to something in the song. See, however it is, the Lord deals with you. That's personal. That's why, that's why when you listen to people give their testimony, what you want again is you want to learn the lesson and you want to increase your faith, but don't think that it's going to happen. It's got to be like it was for them. That's where a lot of people have gotten in trouble over the years. They tried to imitate somebody else's relationship with the Lord. No, God's not going to deal with you the same way he deal with somebody else. That part's up to him. The part that's up to you is to respond to the way the Lord is dealing with you, whatever way that is. However the Lord deals with you, respond. That's why sometimes, God, I feel it coming out. That's why sometimes the Lord gives me a prophetic vision for the people that are listening at me so he can know, so you can know that this prophecy stuff is real because the stuff he makes come out of my mouth that there's no way I could know that. I'm seeing it now, I'm seeing somebody with a uh, bright red on and a bright stylized hat and a lot of uh, heavy lipstick and uh, some bright, maybe red, off red, maybe lavender shoes and some dark stockings. You've got your full uh, church thing on and your dress is about a little bit below, below knee length. You're listening to me right now. Um, there's also somebody listening to me with white but you're in a white background. You may or may not have a white clothes, but the walls and the ceiling and the environment around you is white. That's the environment you're, list you're listening to me in right now. Some of you that are listening to me overseas, the Lord is speaking to you as I'm speaking to you, telling you that you are indeed a prophet and you are indeed supposed to walk in the prophetic and that you're tuning into me is not an accident, but rather is the spirit of God calling you into 
a deeper level of the prophetic and not to be afraid of the people around you because the people around you keep telling you that you're crazy. You're not crazy. That is the voice of the Holy Ghost calling you. Uh, one more thing I see. I see somebody listening to me and I see green around you. It's in your environment. Like you might be in a room with green carpet or you might be in a jungle. You might be somewhere that I see lots of pine greens. I see lots of bright greens, lime greens around you. A lot of greenage around you might be shrubbery. Okay. So those of you that that corresponds to, how can I know that? I only know that by the Holy Ghost. That's how I know. Okay. Because God is trying to show you that this prophetic stuff is real. That the Holy Ghost is actually talking to you. Okay. He might be using my mouth, but that's him talking to you. And so that's why, that's why you've got to get right with Christ and stay right with Christ so you can inherit the blessing because a good shepherd will lead you to the path and so you can avoid the danger. Now, when you watch and see what's going to happen, you write this down what's going to happen in the weeks to come. There's going to be a lot of unexpected death. There's already been a lot of unexpected death. Remember that the death horsemen came to America in the beginning of 2016 with the death of David Bowie. Remember when David Bowie died in January of 2016? Ever since then, people have been dropping by flies. That's because the death horsemen is here. The judgment of death is in the land. But what's going to happen in the weeks to come is going to be a lot of unexpected death. Just a lot of out of nowhere, folks are going to be dead. Watch. Write that down. Watch and see what's going to happen. In the weeks to come, it's going to be that. I don't want to be nowhere in that path of death. I want to be on the path of life. And so the only way to do that is to stay close to the Lord. There is no other way. Okay. And, and some people are really going to get their hearts broken because some of it's going to be quite tragic. Do you know why it's going to happen? It's going to happen because you are not listening to the Lord and you're not sincere in your heart. I'm going to say that one more time. Because you're not listening to the Lord, you're not sincere in your heart. And that's how the enemy catches so many people. And sometimes what a lot of people don't realize is that you're at the end of your grace period. Now, do you know that um, sometimes if you're late with a bill, they give you a grace period, meaning it was due on the 25th, but we'll give you an extra seven days without charging you a late charge. Sometimes utilities, sometimes a credit card. You know what I'm talking about? Or sometimes uh, if you have a loan or you're doing something, you get a grace period, meaning that you get a certain amount of weeks or months with no interest at all, or that you get a chance to try out what you're doing. You get a grace period, okay? So I know you understand what a grace period means. Well, let me help you understand that sometimes people don't realize you're at the end of your grace period with God. In other words, God looked at your life last year and was not pleased with what he saw. And you weren't bearing any fruit that was pleasing. So he said, I'm going to give you one more year to get yourself together, to get your heart right with me, to get into obedience and become a fruit bearing Christian. Some people don't realize that they're at the end of that grace period. Because if you are not walking with God the way you're supposed to, there will come a day where that grace period is up. And your days end up getting cut short. That's why I keep trying to tell you this is not a game. It's not a joke. This is your life. This is your life. This is your life. So in the weeks to come, you're going to see a lot of unexpected death because a lot of, I'm talking about believers. I'm just talking about sinners. Don't understand that they're at the end of the grace period that God has been watching you for a while. And God has been giving you chance after chance after chance after chance. And you will not soften your heart and get right with Christ and do what Christ is calling you to do. You're going to come at some point to the end of that grace period. Okay. All right, uh, two or three more scriptures and we'll be done. Ezekiel 33 and 31. Ezekiel was another uh, major Old Testament prophet. Ezekiel 33 and 31, Berean Study Bible. So my people come to you as usual, sit before you and hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Although they express love with their mouths, their hearts pursue dishonest gain. New International Version, my people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Their mouths speak of love, 
but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. New Living Translation. So my people pretending to be sincere and sit before you. So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. Wow. <laughs> what did the scripture just tell us? The scripture just tell us that there's a whole lot of people that come to listen to the prophetic word, just like they listened to Ezekiel in his day and they come and listen, but they have no intention of doing what the prophet of God says. They have no intention of doing what the Holy Spirit is saying through the man or woman of God that's prophesying. But instead, what they about, they about money. Sometimes we see that play out in our religious institutions. Sometimes it's just as plain as day that there are people that do not have your best interest at heart, but they only come. I heard somebody say this. I heard somebody say, it's not their ministry, it's they hustle. <laughs> I remember when I heard her say that, that was so on point. She said, some of these people out here ministering, it's not their ministry, it's not their calling, it's just they hustle, okay? They just hustling up a bunch of gullible people because they don't have your best interest at heart. And when you do find a prophetic word from a man or woman of God, remember that the prophetic word will always come to pass. That's the test of a prophet. If you are doubting whether or not someone is actually a prophet or walking in the prophetic, Watch and see if their word come to pass. That's the test. And when you are sitting under the ministry of someone whose word has been proven to come to pass by the Holy Ghost, it's not that person. That person, we get no glory. Don't be listening to prophets trying to take the glory for themselves. We get no glory. It's the Holy Ghost. All glory goes to God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We're just human. We're human vessels that God can speak through. So all the glory goes to him. But when you see someone who has a proven track record, of their word coming to pass and you listen to them, but you know, you don't bit mo, have no interest <laughs> in what the Holy Ghost is saying. God is saying, you you know, you just trying to get your hustle on. You just trying to find a new racket. You just find, trying to find a new scam. That is true for some people, but that's not true for all of us. Some of us love the Lord for real and we're serving God with or without money. With or without offering some people, you know, at the end of my broadcast, I ask you want to bless me financially. But if you don't, I will be here next week anyway, because I'm doing it because I love the Lord. I'm not doing what I do for money. I do what I do because I love the Lord and because I honestly feel honored to be used in the prophetic because God does not need me. And God could have thrown me away, but he didn't. He stayed with me. He loved me. I've seen that loving devotion. Of his and everything the scripture says is true. And he gave me an opportunity to be a part of his program. I am sincerely grateful from my heart. My son is here. My son will tell you yesterday, I told my son yesterday that I'm just happy just to still be in the game. There is so much mess that has gone on. Remember, we're dealing with judgment on a global scale. A local scale is one thing, like something happened in your town. A personal scale is one thing, like something happened to you or your family. A regional scale is another level, like something happens in your state and in three or four states around you. A national scale is when something happened across the country, but that ain't where we are. We're dealing with judgment on a global scale. Did you hear me? We're dealing with judgment to where God has drawn back his mighty hand and, and, and smote the planet. If you paid attention to the news in this last week, you saw that there has been a resurgence of COVID, like in Italy, for example, because there's a new strain and all of a sudden all these new cases are popping up and there's a new strain of COVID that they don't know what to deal with and all these, these people are getting sick. Do you understand that? We're dealing with judgment on a global scale. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this is not the time to be playing games. So that's what I mean when I say that with or without money, with or without, if I have a uh, 100,000 people watching me, if I have one person watching me, if I have no people watching me, I'm going to be here on my post and I'm going to release the prophetic word. Not because of me, because I get no glory, but because I'm so grateful to be able to serve the Lord. I'm so grateful 
for him to give me a chance to be a part of his program because God don't need you. God could put the prophetic word in the mouth. Amos in the Bible wasn't even a prophet. Amos was a shepherd. Okay, so people that get caught up in these titles, God don't need you. God does not need you. God don't need you. God doesn't need you. I don't care what kind of title you got. I don't care what kind of degrees you got. The Lord does not need you. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make in saying all that is that we need to heed the prophetic word the word rooted in scripture and the word from the Holy Ghost, that we got to be serving God from our hearts. And it is not about titles. And it's not about personal gain. You can't keep coming and listen to the prophetic word and then just keep living in any kind of way you want to live. That's just lip service. Final scripture. This one's kind of rough too, Matthew 15. We're going to read verses three through nine. Matthew, this is Jesus talking in the first book of the New Testament, first gospel, book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse three, and I'm reading out of the NIV New International Version. Jesus replied, he's talking to the Pharisees because they asked him about how come they don't observe the ceremonial, ceremonial washing of hands before they eat. It was a Jewish custom. Jesus replied, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Wow, now see, the Lord got rough. Don't be listening to the people, you know, that, that are only ever talking about how the Lord said, forgive me 70 times seven. The Lord said a lot of stuff in the Bible that you ain't gonna hear in church. God taught me that a long time ago. The Lord said that y'all are tripping on ceremonial washings of hands but you don't even honor your parents. He said, God said, honor your father and mother. And if you curse your mom and your daddy, you're going to be put to death. That's still true. That's why a whole lot of people, because you can't find people that are disrespectful to parents that have long lives. Most people that disrespect their parents, their lives get cut short. So that's still true. But they're saying, but they were saying that, you know, you don't have to honor your father and your mother because whatever, you know, whatever gifts you're going to give them, whatever I'm even going to give them, we're going to devote it to God instead. The Lord said, you made the whole word of God of no effect because of your traditions. Twisting the word of God to mean something that it doesn't mean. So you can just look like, you know, you're, you're getting away with something. You, you say you're trying to honor God, but you're not actually doing what he's saying. You just make his stuff up because that's what religious people do. Religious people do not read the Bible. Religious people make up stuff and call it God. Then the Lord said, you're a hypocrite. And Isaiah was right when he said, these people honor me with their lips. Is that jaw jacking? But their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You're worshiping God about you. You're not worshiping God about him. And the Lord said, that's vain, meaning it's vain in the sense of being empty headed and full of vanity, but also means it's in vain, meaning it's not doing you any good. You've seen it. You've seen it when we used to gather in church. You've seen it. You've seen folks who there's just something about the way they do what they do to where it's like a show. Like they they shouting and doing all this stuff and they doing all this stuff because they want some attention. <laughs> I've seen people do that in church. I've seen people do sexy dances in church. I'm thinking about some stuff I saw right now. It was women. It wasn't men doing it. I saw some women doing some sexy dances and some this kind of stuff and sticking their chest out. It's a lot of pelvic thrust, that kind of thing. And they, they said they was worshiping. And everybody was like, everybody was like, you have an air sex, baby. Why are you having air sex? You just over there having air sex because you want people to look at you. Just doing, because, uh, uh. see, when you're trying to do stuff and it's just about attention, that's about you. That's not about him. Okay. That's why you, you can go into your private closet. You want to worship God? You can wait till you get home and go in your private closet and pray and praise him and cry 
and run around the house and do whatever you need to do and don't nobody have to see it. And God will honor that because it ain't about to show. See that? Okay. So that's our weekly live prophetic word. So what the Holy Ghost put an emphasis on this week is that we got to get our hearts right with Christ. If your heart ain't right with Christ, don't go through the outward motion, but tear your heart, not your garment. And the reason that's so important is because there are blessings and opportunities coming down the pipe, but you got to be sincere in your walk with God to get them. Otherwise, you're going to mess them up. And there's also danger and devastation coming down the pipe. And if you are out of the path, out of the will of God, then a lot of people are going to get caught. And the Lord want to let you know that he sees you wherever you are in the world. And that the prophetic is real. And he wants you to know that in the weeks to come, there's going to be a lot of sudden, just out of nowhere stuff. And a lot of people are going to be deeply hurt. Do you know why? Because they haven't been listening. Because we are dealing with judgment on a global scale. And there is death in the streets and there's death in people's very breath now. Do you understand that? All right. That's a sobering word, but it's a real word. I'm going to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say what the Holy Ghost told me to say. It ain't always sunshine and flowers. It's what the Bible says, life and death, and you have to choose. All right? Amen. God bless. That's our weekly live prophetic word. Uh, this is actually, uh, Periscope is closing down. So this is actually the last Sunday for Periscope. So I just did a simultaneous broadcast on Periscope. I don't know what they're going to do with all the recordings, like if they're going to leave them up. Because Periscope said they were moving stuff to Twitter. So my Prophet David Taylor broadcast um normally it's simultaneously broadcast on twitter anyway but we'll see but anyway this is the last sunday for periscope so praise god i will be here next sunday which is going to be easter sunday at 2 30 p.m central standard time for the regular time and then one week from this thursday not this thursday but one week from this thursday we'll have our next no more genies i'm doing a series and no more genies entitled who is god so this will be who is god part three we're going over attributes of God so we can be sure that we know him. Attributes of God from the scriptures. So we're going to get rid of all the wrong things we thought about God and we're going to rebuild with an actual biblical concept of God. That's what the No More Genius teaching is about. And I think there's going to be four of those. So the next one is three and then the following one will be in May and that should be the last one for that. Okay. So I'll be here next week. Now, remember I told you my goal for 2021 is to increase my reach. So uh, I told you that every Sunday, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do this Sunday. I'm gonna ask you to spread the word about my prophetic devotionals. I want you to share that, share those links. Uh, if you want me to put a link up there, I will. Share those links about my prophetic devotional because here's the reason why. The reason why is because we have, as you've been hearing me say, we have been in a time for a while now where people are supposed to be walking in their own prophetic. They're supposed to be walking in their own prophetic walk with God. And if you don't have your own prophetic walk with God, if you don't know, if you don't know how to get a word from the Lord, that's the thing how to get a word from the Lord yourself. So you need to be studying the scriptures that are about the prophetic. That's why I put the book together. So I'm going to put the link in the, uh, in the chat. That's what I want you to do. I want you to share with someone. Now, this is the end of March. So quarter one is gone. So I put the link in the chat for quarter two. Then the prophetic devotional quarter two because it's so important because even if you know my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, he comes on every day. He has a prophetic word every day. So definitely you can feel free to check him out. But even if you're listening to the words of a prophet or an apostle every day, you've got to develop your own. See, the point of the apostolic and prophetic is to not make you dependent on a preacher. The point of the apostolic and prophetic is to help you with your own relationship with God. So that's why I created those devotionals. So you can study the scriptures about the prophetic. So you can uh, begin to develop the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Because you have to develop your relationship with the Holy Ghost. Okay? He's someone you have to learn, just like every other relationship that you have. 
And every year that you live, you should know more about him. He should have more of you. You should have increased in faith, increased in power, and increased in miracles. You should have something to show for your time on earth. And that's why I keep saying you need to develop your own prophetic walk with God. If you haven't, you need to start today. So I put the link for uh, my product, prophetic devotional quarter two, so you can study a scripture about the prophetic every day on your own. And it's written journal style, so you can get a word from the Lord and write it down. And so then you can mark the date. So then when that prophetic word, if it was a word about the future comes to pass, you can go back and write down the day it comes to pass. And that's how you get confidence in your own prophetic. That's how you get confidence in hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying when you see the word of God play out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much to all of you that uh, listen to me live. If you want to bless me financially, I don't do what I do for money, but some people do like to bless me financially. So I'll put my Zelle on the screen. You can actually send it to my personal email. Uh, I use Zelle now because um, Zelle doesn't charge any fees. So it's just straight transfer. So it doesn't charge you any fees for giving. It doesn't charge me any fees for receiving. So you want to bless me financially, uh, there's my Zelle. Thank you so much. And um, uh, I just thank you so much for listening. And uh, so remember, let's listen to the words of the Holy Spirit and let's heed the scriptures and let's stay in the path with Christ. Let's stay where the Lord wants us to stay so we avoid the devastation and the Lord can lead us straight into the blessing. Okay, amen. God bless. I'll see you at the same time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our next weekly live prophetic word. God bless. Satan tries to threaten, and sickness is his weapon to fill my days with strife.